What does the Bible teach us about money? In this video, we will examine four specific biblical commands regarding money and how we are to handle it. Number one, do not go into debt. God does not want his people to be in debt. The Bible says, Owe no man anything but to love one another. Romans 13, 8. Anytime we go into debt, we lose some of our freedom. The Bible says, The borrower is servant to the lender. Proverbs 22, 7. Many times God calls people to serve him, but they are unable to do so because of debts. Number two, do not strive to be rich. The love of money has destroyed more people than perhaps any other one thing. The Bible says, The love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, for which some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. 1 Timothy 6.10 Nyen Jia You do not have to be rich to love money. Often those who have the least of it love it most. The Bible cautions us against quick and easy ways to get rich. Dishonest men often use get-rich-quick schemes to steal money from trusting people. The Bible says, Greedy people try to get rich, quick but don't realize they're headed for poverty. Proverbs 28, 22, Welt. Number 3. Do not hoard money. Every Christian should save some money out of what he earns so that he may have something for emergencies. But we are not to hoard money. Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived, said, Here is a misfortune on earth that I have seen, wealth hoarded by its owner to his own misery. Ecclesiastes 5.13, Net Bible. Jesus urges us to lay up treasure in heaven rather than lay up treasure on earth. He said, do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew 6, 1920, 1, Matthew 6, 1920, 1, now, Javay. Number 4. Do not make money your God. We cannot serve God and, at the same time, make money our goal in life. Jesus said that it is impossible to serve God and money. Our Lord said, No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon, money, Luke 16, 13. The Bible warns us again and again of the danger of money. Jesus called it the mammon of unrighteousness because money is part of Satan's unrighteous world system and it so often leads people away from God. The Bible says, But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and perdition. 1 Timothy 6, 9, 9 Chivy Money gives people a sense of power and importance, but it offers no real security. The Bible says, Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty, nor to trust in uncertain riches. 1 Timothy 6, 17, Neek J. Short story on dangers making money your God. In 1921, nine of the world's most successful money-making businessmen got together at the Edgewater Hotel in Chicago. They included the head of the greatest monopoly, the most successful speculator on Wall Street, the president of the largest independent steel company, the president of the largest utility company, the president of the largest gas company, the greatest wheat speculator in the United States, the president of the New York Stock Exchange, the president of the Bank of International Settlements, and a member of the president's cabinet. 25 years later, where were these men of fantastic wealth and power? Ivor Kruger, head of the greatest monoploy, died of suicide. Jesse Livermore, the most successful speculator on Wall Street, died of suicide. Charles Schwab, president of the largest independent steel company, died in bankruptcy. Samuel Insull, the president of the greatest utility company, died penniless, a fugitive from the law in a foreign land. Howard Hobson, president of the largest gas company, went insane. Arthur Cotton, the greatest wheat speculator, died abroad bankrupt. Richard Whitney, president of the New York Stock Exchange, was convicted of fraud and went to Sing, Sing Penitentiary. Leon Fraser, president of the Bank of International Settlements, died of suicide. Albert Fall, a member of the president's cabinet, went to prison for wrongdoing and was finally pardoned from prison so he could die at home. These men centred their lives on money. When it was gone, they had nothing to live for. 
Rather than putting our trust in uncertain riches, we are to put our trust in the living God who gives us richly all things to enjoy. 1 Timothy 6, 17